Do you guys want to learn how to access the web interface of your brand new Onkyo TXRZ70 AV receiver? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Dallasalo with AudioHawks. As you guys are aware at this time, I'm a huge fan of the Akio TX-RZ70 11.2 channel AV receiver. This thing is a beast. I've said it many times before, and I don't say it lightly. It's based on my test bench results, which were superb. And I linked the video down below if you guys want to watch it. I also did an unboxing video so you can get a closer look at how this AVR is. I love the internal guts of this thing. It's just a work of art for the fact that it's only $2,800 retail. It gives you 11 internal amplifiers at 140 times 11, conservatively rated. And it's on sale right now through our channel partner, Audio Advice, for $2,300. That is the deal of the year for an AV receiver if you're looking for a really powerful flagship that'll do 11 channels of amplification and processing. Now, I wanted to show you how to use the web interface. There are all the major brands now are offering this as an alternative to just using your remote control and your on-screen display on your TV. You know, Yamaha, Denon, Marantz, Anthem, they all have a web interface. But some people may not know how to access the web interface for Akio and how to enter the credentials to go into it. This is a very useful tool as a calibrator or as an installer, especially if the source device is not in the same room as the AVR. As long as your laptop or iPad or PC is on the same network as the AV receiver, you simply just have to put in the IP address. And I'm going to show you how to do all of this now. So the first thing you do is you, you type in the IP address on your network, and then you got to use the credential CI user for username and CI user for password. And it doesn't work sometimes, so you got to do it twice. And there we go. So while that's loading, um, they recommend you change the password. I don't know too many people that got to hack into your AV receiver. Personally, I would just leave it as CI user, something to remember, write it down. Your choice whether or not you want to change the password. And there we go. All right, so you have a whole menu here of all the different configuration options from input to speaker, audio adjustments, hardware, miscellaneous, tuner preset, you name it. I like the fact that it has an HDMI diagnostic tool. So if you want to put some new cables in your system, you want to make sure that they work before you uh, go and put them in. You can run a diagnostic tool on it to make sure the cables will pass an HDMI 2.1 signal, 8K, 60P, 24P, 4K, 2460. This is great. Um, Marantz and Denon were the first to do this in their AVRs, and now all the manufacturers are following suit, or at least some of them are. Akio is definitely doing that. And then you also have a status on what the receiver is doing, how things are set up, what the signal is. It even shows you the temperature of the amplifier. That's I'm, I haven't seen that too often. And it shows you the status of the fan speed, which I didn't even know they were on right now on a low speed. You don't hear them. In fact, it really, I had a hit this receiver hard with all channels driven to even get those fans to speed up and it was still very quiet. So you get all the uh, signal information here. You, again, you can get this if you use the remote control and and you wanna have a through your graphic interface on your TV. The other cool thing is you can print your current configuration, you can back it up, you could upload it, you could store it, recall it, you could do a factory reset, change your password here, all that stuff is there, it's great. So just starting out very basic, you have your input output assignments. This is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you have two HDMI outputs. You could decide whether you want that output to go to the main or the, the secondary or both. You could do upscaling, you play with your zone two stuff. This is where you set your uh, signal format, whether it's 4K or 8K enhanced. HDMI input assignments, all this is pretty self-explanatory. So I'm gonna kind of breeze through this your video inputs here, your digital audio inputs, you could assign these to any way you want. They're defaulted as they are here. I didn't change any of them for this. Analog audio. You could skip uh, inputs, which is useful if you're using um, you know, an on-screen display and you, or you're using a remote system and you don't wanna have all the different choices if you're not using them. It's great to have that feature. You do that on TVs a lot too. So here's the speaker configuration. This is important. So this is where you decide on 
how many speakers you're doing in your system. Now, people were asking me, can you do six height channels with this AVR? It doesn't look like you can. It looks like you're maxed at four. So even if you try to do five bed, you can't do six height. You could do up to four height. In this situation, I only tested 7.1 because I was doing bench tests on my audio precision. Now, this unit has dual subwoofer outputs and they're independent which means you could set delay and trim levels separately for those, that's great. And this is especially useful if you're running direct uh, live bass control because it'll do the uh, individual EQ and phase and all that stuff for each sub independently, that's awesome. This is where you assign your height channels, your zone uh, two pre-outs. Personally, I wish all the manufacturers would drop this zone two, zone three nonsense in AVRs because we've moved past that now. Everybody's using external devices for distributed audio. I would have much rather have seen Onkyo drop the zone two and zone three and just given us 13 channels of processing. So this would have been the deal of the century if you could do 13 channels of processing with 11 channels of amplification. The only way to get to that level is to jump up to a receiver that's like $3,500. So you can't get a you know, $2,800 or less receiver that does 13 channels of processing for the main zone. Please Onkyo, consider that for the next model. This is that dreaded impedance switch. Do not mess with it. Leave it at six ohms or more under every circumstance or you will bleed your speakers dry of power. You'll go from this beautifully designed amplifier that could do you know, 170 watts times two channels driven at eight ohms and, and like 265 watts at four ohms. It'll drop that down to like 30 to 50 watts depending on the impedance of the speaker. Do not mess with this, please. I wish they hid this and made it harder to change. Here's where you have your crossover type. So your normal, which is your standard base management, or if you have a clip system, you can actually go and tell it what kind of clip speakers you have, and it'll pick the right crossovers based on the speaker mechanics. That's pretty cool. As you guys know, uh, Onkyo and Tagger is part of the Klipsch group now, so it makes sense that they put this kind of equalization in here. This is where you set your base management. I tested at full bandwidth because I was doing all channels driven power tests. They recommend 80 hertz because it's a THX receiver. And for most cases, I tell people to set all their speakers small to 80 hertz. I would say for 90% of cases, you're gonna wanna base manage all your speakers, but there are outliers like I do in my systems. I run my main speakers full range only because they're capable of doing it. But it's a little trickier to do the base management and get everything right when you do that. The double base features, so if you set your main speakers large and you still wanna have subwoofer output um, for two channel, Typically, you won't get subwoofer output in a two channel unless you engage the double bass. And you got to be careful with that because you can get too much bass output. You got to just make sure you do the right calibration and EQ and all that stuff. Here's where you do your distances. You could do it in feet, inches, or you could do it in meters. Um, good adjustability here. I set everything to common distance because I was just basically doing my bench tests. But obviously, you would set the distances based on your scenario, how far apart your speakers are, you name it. You got all of that here. You got, like I said, if you turn the other subwoofer channel on, I would have a distance availability here as well. Here's your levels. You do your level calibrations. It goes from minus 12 to plus 12. Test tones on and off. Now, if you have uh, Atmos speakers that are Dolby height, uh, the bouncy house speakers, you would select that here and you can do the, um, the different distances here, as well as run on their um, auto EQ system, the Accu Reflex, which I have not tested. They uh, interestingly have a GEQ, which I'm not a huge fan of graphic equalizers, but this is the most comprehensive graphic equalizer I've seen on an AVR since like the 80s. This thing is like 15 bands. Usually you get six or seven bands with the other brands like, like Denon and uh, Marantz, but this one goes from 25 Hertz all the way to 16 kilohertz. It could be useful if you're trying to tame some bass problems and you're not very handy with Dirac and you wanna just go in there and go by ear. This could help you. Personally, I wish it was a PEQ with variable Q and um, frequency adjustment and amplitude response. I wish they had PEQ on this, but maybe in a future model, we will see that. Now, this is a THX receiver, so if you are using THX processing, this is where you would mess with all of that. 
the EQ for standing wave. I'm not a big fan of this feature because it's a fixed band. Uh, the Q is not adjustable. I think I calculated the Q is like two, which is really wide and it affects all your channels. So in most cases, I would say just bypass, don't even use it. Speaker virtualizer, if you don't have height channels, um, you can mess with that stuff there. Here's where you select the clip speaker. Um, if you're running clip speakers and you can see it does a reference premiere reference or custom install, pretty neat. Um, I would love to see the day where we could just have a database of all the speaker parameters from all the companies and you can go and put that in there and have everything perfectly match for that. But I don't think we're gonna see that anytime soon. Here's where you could do something that many of the other receivers don't offer is just the way you do multiplexing of your mono signals, whether you wanna do left and right, center, um, the subwoofer, how you do the subwoofer combination. Um, I think that's a pretty cool feature. So kudos to uh, Akio there for offering something unique. And then you've got uh, loudness management for Dolby. And this is very important, center spread. You guys know I'm a huge fan of center spread. They took that away for a while, Dolby, for the height virtualization. If you were a receiver company licensed in height virtualization, you couldn't have center spread. I made a stink about it with a video and they brought it back. So Akio has implemented center spread. It's very critical to have this feature if you're listening to two channel up mix with the Dolby surround up mix and you wanna preserve the main imaging from your left and right speakers. You don't wanna dump all that into the center channel which collapses your stereo sound stage, especially if you're sitting at MLP where you already have a strong phantom center. You'd wanna turn center spread on when you're up mixing two channel music. So definitely uh, check that out. Here's your DTS IMAX settings. Uh, it's pretty standard that you would get with all DTS related receivers. And I think they have some settings for Oro as well in here. Um, yeah, here's the Oro stuff. You also have how you want to adjust your volume, whether it's relative or absolute. I prefer relative personally. You can set a max volume. You can set a power up volume, which is a good idea so you don't get blasted. Don't use the last feature. If you were cranking uh, Dune 2 and then you shut the AVR off and then you come on the next day and you want to listen to orchestral music, you don't want to be blown away. So definitely use the um, power up volume at a low volume like that. It's a safe bet to do that. That's what I do when I set up receivers. There's your Oral 3D stuff. And then you have, you could adjust the input volume level for each input. So if you have one particular source, it's much louder than another. You could compensate for that here. Pretty standard, most AVRs offer that. You can rename your inputs, that's neat. You could decide whether you want PCM fixed mode on or off. I would tell in most cases you'd want that off. Your video select, here's your HDMI CEC stuff, your network stuff. Again, this is where I found the IP address using the uh, GUI, that way I could log into it through the web interface. Bluetooth features, this has Bluetooth capability, pretty cool. Power management. Um, this is just how you handle whether you want the network on or off. It acts much quicker if you leave the network standby to on, it consumes a little bit more power. Your 12 volt trigger. There's a bunch of stuff here for Sonos. I don't mess with Sonos. So if any Sonos users are uh, fans of that, you could give some comments in the, th in the thread on how that works. I'd appreciate that. Again, the multi-zone, I wish they would just get rid of it. It's cool that they offer it, but it's time to move on. Tuner, I don't personally use a tuner anymore. I can do all that through a digital radio. Here's your preamp mode. So if you physically are using external amplification, you could select preamp disconnect for the front channels and then use all the internal amps for everything else, or you could do it for all the channels. Now, if you're buying a receiver like this, I couldn't envision you not using at least some of the amplifiers in it. I would say in most cases, you probably wanna do it to the front channels, get a really, kick-ass mono block or two-channel amplifier. If you've got some power-hungry speakers, take a little bit of the load off the AVR. This physically disconnects the preamp to the power amp so it doesn't feed that signal into an unloaded amplifier. I like that. I asked Marantz and Denon to do that for years. They did it first. Now Ankyo and Yamaha and a bunch of other companies are following suit. So it's cool that they offer this feature. You just get the very best signal from your preamp as possible. Great idea here. Firmware update stuff, I would leave this enabled. You never know when the new firmware is gonna come out. Your tuner presets, I'm just gonna blow past all that. And then you've got your different cinema EQ modes for THX. So 
And then here's cool. Um, so this unit comes standard with Direct Live, and you can upgrade to Direct Live Base Control. You can select what input uses Direct, if whether or not you want it on or off. I didn't run the calibration, so I don't have that option here. Same thing with their Accu EQ system. You can select that, or you can select the manual EQ if you want to save those EQ settings into different presets. Your AV sync, if you've got lip sync problems, you could compensate for that on each input here. Music optimizer, that's just like a compression algorithm. A lot of the AV companies offer that if you want to restore bandwidth or you know, you're using compressed music and you want it to sound a little bit better. It's subjectively better. I don't know if it's objectively better. Digital filter, I already talked about this in the test bench results. I use auto, but you do have the sharp, slow, short, and you can watch my video if you want to learn more about that. Your eARC function, your HDR function for video, HDR temp, Dolby Vision, it's got it all. So, I mean, this receiver is loaded to the gills with variable refresh rate. So this is a serious receiver for gaming. It's full HDMI 2.1, 8K. All seven inputs on the back are 8K. The front input is 4K. So that's in a nutshell on how to use the web interface for this AVR. It's a very useful tool. I would recommend you guys check it out. It's just another path to getting into the AVR to do calibrations or to do configurations or to check, save, backup, you name it. You've got all of that ability, whether you do it through the web interface or do it through your remote with your on-screen display on your TV. Ankyo has got you covered. So guys, I hope you liked this video. Please hit the thumb up, hit the subscribe. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening. Oh, and last thing, in case you forgot the user and password, it's CI user. I'll put it in the video description below. Peace.